Hey you guys, it's Britt. Tonight we're here to talk for just a few minutes about Daniel Prada and his statement that he made against Colleen Ballinger and my thoughts about it. Also a little bit of hypocrisy sprinkled on the top, but if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so Daniel Prada is not somebody who I follow on social media, but the only reason that I even know a little bit about him is because he made a statement against Gabby Hanna. He dated Joey Graceffa, who has been completely silent about Colleen, and that is another YouTuber who has done collabs with her, specifically with her um, Miranda Sings character, Joey. There's been a lot of clips that have been recirculating on social media. Just, you know, Miranda being completely weird and inappropriate, where Joey was directly involved in that content. But he um, dated this guy, Daniel, and Daniel went ahead and made this statement talking about Colleen. And I want to talk about this because it's very interesting. People always want to rewrite history and rewrite what their role is in something and rewrite how involved or not involved they were with somebody once they've been exposed as a terrible person. The issue with Daniel is back when the Gabby Hanna drama was going on about, what, over two years ago, Daniel came out with his statement and talked about how Colleen Ballinger was one of his best friends and basically, you know, she was a great person and all of this kind of stuff. Well, in this video now, he's completely trying to rewrite history and re-basically redesign who Colleen is or was to him. So let's just listen to this. It's not a very long video, but I have quite a few thoughts. So let's allow him to speak. I wanted to take a moment now and speak about the Colleen Ballinger group allegations, which are not even allegations anymore. All the facts are out there and it, everything that happened is out there and it's horrifying. And that behavior is absolutely, absolutely just horrific and scary and I'm so sorry to anybody who is a victim of that behavior. It's awful and I hope that you are able to heal from this and grow and hopefully move on and have the closure even though there hasn't been a proper apology. It's awful. It's awful all around and it's something that I've been asked to chime in on for a long time and as somebody who is very vocal and is very you know, I'm not afraid to speak about things, whether it's Logan Paul or Gabby so Hanna. He's not afraid to speak up about things. Let's actually talk about how he still closely aligns himself with James Charles. He still actively follows James Charles as of today, September 18th, 2023. He is still following James Charles on Instagram. I am 100% here for larger creators utilizing their platforms in order to be a voice of reason, be a voice of sanity, be a voice of uh, compassion for people who have been through really awful things with creators. But if you're going to come on your platform and say that you are not afraid to speak up and mention Logan Paul and Gabby Hanna, but you're still aligning yourself with James Charles, who has also been a proven creep and engaging with underage fans, you have to hold the same energy. You can't literally say, oh, well, um, yeah, Colleen Ballinger is a really bad person, which I completely, uh, completely agree with. But then all that somebody has to do is take five seconds and look at who you're following on Instagram and see that you are still following James Charles. So why on earth, Daniel, are you okay with following somebody like James Charles, but you're using your voice to speak out against, uh, out against Colleen? I am here for the calling out Colleen, but keeping the same energy is something that people have such an issue doing on social media. If you don't like this behavior that's being exhibited by this person, 
then you should not be aligning or following anybody who is exhibiting this behavior. I don't understand why people have such a hard time dropping James Charles. I really don't understand it. Somebody um, left a comment and said basically she is no longer of use to him, so he decides to speak out. It's insane he spoke before Joey. Was it overdue? Yes, but it's more than what Joey has said. But he's still friends with James Charles. I've never been somebody who was afraid to speak up. LMAO. Manny and Laura still refuse to cover anything on their podcast, which I find very interesting. Here's my thing. Any of these influencers, Manny, Joey, Colleen, Jojo, Danny, uh, uh, Daniel Prada, any of these people, if you are following James Charles, but you want to act like Colleen Ballinger is somebody that you want to make content around, you are not keeping the same energy. And until you do, you should be called out for it. Let's continue. It's just something that has been a little triggering to me as a victim of SA when I was a teenager. It's just, it's tough. Um, I went through a lot of years of therapy and over the past couple of months of this whole thing unfurling, it's made me realize that there are people out there who dealt with some of the same things that I did and I know how long it followed me in life and how it can randomly trigger me and remind me of So why on earth are you following James Charles? Somebody who was inappropriate with teenage boys that literally fits the same exact demographic that Daniel is describing. Something happened to him when he was a teenage boy. James Charles was creepy and inappropriate with literally teenage boys. And Daniel Prado wants to sit here and act as if what? Oh, let me, let me guess. Oh, I don't really support James. I just hadn't unfollowed him on Instagram. Things and as somebody who has a following on the internet with some young impressionable viewers, like I just want to let you know that this behavior is unacceptable in any capacity, especially somebody at her age. Children are supposed to be protected and nurtured and it's really painful to see so many people hurt by this. It's still even hard for me to talk about now because it's just like, it's awful, it's awful. I can only speak on my own behavior now. It makes me a hypocrite for not speaking out about it. Colleen was somebody who was in my life for a long time and I didn't enter the space as a creator or a YouTuber. I entered the space as a boyfriend, as a duo, as a producer, as a writer. And I didn't you know, start YouTube until like four years ago. So I was able to meet a lot of fellow creators in a more organic setting. And you know, we were able to have like some sort of friendship. There was no like on and off switch happening. There was no, oh, let's be friends just because you're collabing with me. So I was able to see like different sides of people. And I was always treated with a lot of kindness and respect from her, especially when we were on set of Escape the Night. But I also wasn't hanging out with her privately. Um, I know in my Gabby Hanna video, I mentioned that we were best friends. We were good friends in a professional setting and I should have verbalized that. But at the time, everything was so fresh. Three years ago when I made that video, the verbiage just- So this goes to show that when a creator comes on and calls somebody their best friend, probably take that with a grain of salt. Because even if it's somebody who is trustworthy overall, it could come out later on that they were just simply using the incorrect word to define their friendship. Or what could be happening is maybe they were closer. Now he wants to discount what his role in that friendship was. I'm not sure what it is, but I just find it so hypocritical to sit here and make this video and act as if you were gonna be a voice for the victims and speak out and call things out uh, while still standing beside James Charles. I just find that to be hypocritical. I'm not saying that Daniel is a bad guy. I am not saying that he doesn't deserve to have a voice. However, I do find it very hypocritical considering that he is still actively following James Charles. This was incorrect. I think we hung out only a couple times. And then she had me over in a video to react to her pregnancy and I was in and out of there in 30 minutes. That was three years ago, I think three and a half years ago. And that was the last time we really spoke because 
been everything going on. And I moved for a bit and, you know, I was going through my breakup and it was just, you know, a perfect storm of let me assess who's in my life and let me assess who I want to have in my life. And my circle got really small. So were we close friends? No, we weren't. We were professional friends, but that is- I always find the timing of videos like this very interesting. Adam McIntyre made his video in 2020 speaking out about what Colleen did to him. Did we have all the information back then? No. Did we have all the details back then? No. However, we were hearing that she was having an inappropriate relationship with a child. And for me, that's all that I needed to hear to be able to say that it was wrong. Trisha Paytas recently came out with a video and she was calling out Jojo Siwa. I haven't made a standalone video on that, but I will insert a clip so you guys can hear what she had to say. If you know that adults having a friendship with a child is wrong, then where were y'all three years ago? Why wasn't this being called out three years ago? Why were you not on Adam McIntyre's side three years ago? I can't ever force or expect somebody to make a video um, because that's just, you know, not fair. But y'all were still still very, very buddy-buddy cozying up with Colleen, even after all of this information came out. Being friends with JoJo, this uh, information that Adam shared, those are two separate relationships that she was having with children. But now y'all want to stand on your platforms and say adults being friends with kids is wrong, period, and kind of handing uh, having this very direct stance on it, but where was that energy over the last three years? But now you want to come forward and say how wrong it is and say how weird it is, which I agree. And I still think that their voices are valid and very important in this conversation. But I always think that the timing is very interesting. Like if you feel that strongly about something and there is proof to actually show you that this something happened, then why are you quiet? To me, that is, it's very Hollywood, it's very um, fake and phony, and I'm not here for phony BS. If I feel something and the, the evidence has been presented, then that makes my decision for me. I don't need to wait until it's the popular or the acceptable time to call this person out or put distance between me and this person professional friends but that is besides the point i've never been somebody who's scared to speak up and i've never been somebody who is afraid to stand in the line of fire that's something i pride myself on i think a lot of you guys know exactly how confrontational and upfront i am about everything i will do better moving forward and i know that i've aligned myself with certain people i've socially supported people in the past who have exhibited so now they're professional friends, but he was definitely around way more often than somebody just collabing once in a while. I'm not afraid to stand in the line of fire, please. I did problematic and dangerous behavior and I will be better. And I'm not even holding myself accountable. It's, this is something that has been on my mind for a long time over the past summer. I've spent it alone mostly in Montana. I was working out of there and then I was just working on my house here in LA and I will be traveling for the rest of the year. I head to Europe next week for the rest of the year. I've just realized what's important to me. I've realized who I want in my life, what type of people and energy I allow. People in the comments are saying that over on Twitter, people for the last few months have been begging for him to talk about, begging him to talk about this, begging him to address Colleen Ballinger, um, asking him about why he's still following James Charles since this conversation has grown and he was deleting Twitter comments allegedly. Again, I'm not on Twitter, don't plan to ever be on Twitter, but that is what numerous people have been saying in the comments section here, that he was deleting the comments. This is not somebody who wants to take criticism or listen to people who have maybe a different viewpoint or a different vantage point than, than he does. Um, but once it blows up beyond belief, then you're going to get a video out of some of these people. And I think that's what this video was. ...in my life. And I don't want to be somebody who 
only stands up for things when they're not affected by the behavior of others in their life. This whole situation is so serious and it's really, really unfortunate that it ever had to happen. But if I can do anything moving forward, I can use my voice and I can be outspoken. I'm not afraid of criticism. I'm not afraid of being criticized. I welcome it, especially if it's constructive. And I know that I am a solid person. I, I like who I am. And I don't want to be silent about things that are important, that are hurting people especially children. I do apologize. I was told by multiple people on my team to not speak about things and to just let things go and it doesn't involve me, but you know what? Unfortunately, it does involve me because of the world. So here we're going to act as if we are just not afraid. We're ignoring the advice that our team gave us and all of this kind of stuff. Like, I am so tired of people waiting until the very last minute and then acting as if they are going to just, you know, they're not afraid. They're here to speak their truth. And I don't care what my team is saying. I'm here to be transparent and I'm, uh, I am for the victims and I don't like this person. We're just professional. Uh, even though all of the footage on social media would show otherwise that y'all were actually way more than professional friends. And on top of it, you call her your damn best friend. To me, this is all just fake outrage, so manipulative. If you really feel this way, and if you really stand on the fact that adults should not be friends with children, then these voices of reason should have come forth much earlier than September of 2023. I find it pathetic and extremely phony. The world that I was in and that I was a part of, I keep a very low profile now. I am normally by myself. And I like that. I have my friends who are not on the internet. I have a couple friends in the space. But yeah, that's where I'm at. I actually unfollowed Colleen a few months ago, I think end of June or uh, maybe 4th of July weekend. When Trisha released her video, that was really difficult to watch and it made me sad. I reached out to her. I've known her for a very long time as well. And it, it was just, it was wild. It was just so wild. And yeah, that's where I'm at. I hope you guys- So he's admitting that he did not unfollow Colleen until Trisha's video came out. So this is somebody who, in my opinion, he is not even actually with the victims. He is actually saying that, oh, well, Trisha's video made me unfollow Colleen. So it's not Colleen being inappropriate with people like Adam McIntyre or negatively impacting somebody like Becky um, or any of the other victims or her brother Trent and his creepy ass running all over the internet. But because Trisha made her video, then Daniel wants to go ahead and follow, unfollow Colleen. So you're not actually for victims. You had to have your decision made for you by an adult who was negatively impacted by Colleen. But let's not talk about how you personally relate to these victims because you had something happen when you were underage. You did this because of Trisha, who again, I agree, Trisha was unfairly treated. She shouldn't have never been treated that way by Colleen. But I am always going to stand on the fact that adults should not be friends with children. And that is why I stood in Adam's, Adam McIntyre's corner from 2020 when he released his original video on Colleen. Because that is just where I stand. I do not stand for adults being friendly or parasocial or anything with children. And yes, you know, again, like I said, Trisha unfairly treated. His decision was made because of Trisha. It was not because Colleen was being inappropriate with children. I don't know, guys. I think that he is, um, you know, do I think that he's the worst guy ever? No, absolutely not. But I get a very, um, I, I just get phony vibes. I don't like when people sit there and act as if they are just, you know, here to set the record straight and they are strong in their opinions and their integrity. And, you know, I know who I am and I'm not afraid of criticism. 
But then it's like, okay, you waited all this time. You were being called out on Twitter for who knows how long about this. And then finally, after Trisha made her video, then you decided to unfollow Colleen. That is not somebody who knows their morals. That is not somebody who knows exactly what they are okay and not okay with. That is somebody who is just waiting until it all implodes and then finally deciding to make a video on it, which I find to be, frankly, incredibly ridiculous. I'm gonna try to make today a double upload day. We shall see. I will do my best, but that's gonna be it for now. So if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.